What role does tradition, culture, and family expectations play in author Yijide Kalanko's novel, A Good Name? We'll ask her, but before we do, if you love books, please subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted the second and fourth week of every month on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. I am so excited to have author Yeji Day Kalanko with me today. And we are going to chat about her novel, A Good Name, which was published by Cornica Editions. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Yeji Day. Thank you very much. Good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> So, Yijide, can you tell us what is A Good Name about? So, A Good Name is the story of a Nigerian couple, mm -hmm. uh, Izia Fakego and Zinachidi Ukerike. Um, it's the story of, of you know, a man who left home in the search of a new life, a new dreams. And uh, that light, new life did not turn out exactly how he had envisioned it. And then he decides, okay, I'm going to have a second act. And his second act involved somebody else. He involved going back to Nigeria and finding a bride and bringing her over. And she was going to help him recreate this new life. But yeah. it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> and so it's, it's about, uh, you know, um, dreams, uh, you know, truncated dreams. Um, it's, it's about um, learning to decide what we want for ourselves. It's, it's, it's about challenging cultural expectations, challenging family responsibilities uh, that may not suit the kind of life that we want to live. Um, it's about, you know, um, making meaning of a new life in a new place with new cultures. Uh, so it's, it's about many things, very layered, I think. Yeah, it's about yes, friendship, it's, it's about love. It is. And uh, while I was reading it, like I couldn't help but wonder of your characters, like which one came to you first? Uh, Izzy Effa did. Um, um, Izzy Effa did because um, I, I think it was the story started with that, uh, you know, like you leave home, but home does not really leave you. The expectations of home, they follow you. Yes. And, you know, it's that tug of war between, you know, still um, fulfilling those obligations and then also finding your own way. And, and I, I immigrated to, to the States first for coming to Canada. So I've experienced that mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, you have obligations at home and you have obligations here. And so I could sympathize with him. I know in, with, with that regard. And, and you know, Yijide, I was really surprised because I was prepared not to like him, but I was very sympathetic to him. Um, very sympathetic to him as a character. Was this something that you intended right from the get-go when you were writing was to show the expectations that are also placed on on the males as well? Or did that just kind of come as you were writing? Um, I think it was a mix of both. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I wanted to show, you know, that um, there were humans, you know, mm -hmm. human with flaws and, yes. and, um, and, and I didn't, I, I didn't want, um, you know, a character that people would just hate. <laughs> <laughs> you know and then that once they do that once they shut their mind uh to him they would not even be willing to listen or to find mm -hmm. out you know what could have let you know what caused all the things that happened right? right um so but i'm i'm really when people tell me oh you know what at the end of the book they always say you know i didn't you know like i could un i could i may have agreed with how you know maybe his actions or what he did i oh i don't i may or i don't but I could see why. And I think that sometimes when we uh, understand why people act the way they do, then we may be able to see their humanity. Yeah. Like, yeah, I may not have made those decisions. I may not have made those, but I can see why. Mm -hmm. And um, so then, they, you know, then that way we can see them as more hu human versus like this monster. Yeah. Um, yeah so so yeah. I, I'm, I'm really thankful it happened that, you know, like it ended the way it did. That yeah. people were able to see him in that way. 
Yes. And that, that was actually another surprise for me, not only being sympathetic to him, but your ending <laughs> Yes, <laughs> without giving anything away, like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I did not expect that ending. Were you always leading in that direction or as you, as, or did the ending change when you got to the, um, point? I, it, it was I like I oh uh, because it was a pulled from the headlines plot, mm. so and and that was part of what led to me writing the book, uh, mm. because there were many stories like Xena that were happening, yeah. and the way I always sometimes like I said I'm inspired by life and mm -hmm. it's about things that happen around me and when I write stories about it's about either something I want to learn more about something I want to draw attention more to so I just want to understand why things happen the way they do and so that was so it was going to be like that was an ending because it had to end that way um because of you know it was kind of like mirroring what was going on in real life yes and um yeah so but as as a reader I still found it shocking so everyone you have to read the book to find out what we're talking about <laughs> what we're talking about yeah. now his wife Zena um I, I really liked her and I kept thinking, you know, when we're first introduced to her, she's back in Nigeria in a small village, but she's got, there's a spark to her. Like she definitely has a little bit of a flame in her belly. If she didn't um, go to America, what do you think, how would her life have unfolded if she'd stayed in Nigeria? Hmm. Well, well, I think one of the things I remember um, she mentioned in the book was that she wanted to own a chicken business. <laughs> <laughs> so she may be running like this, you know, own this huge chicken farm. I, you know, like, I, I think she would have definitely gone to school. Yeah. Um, I think she would have gone on to school. I think um, in some ways she would have followed, you know, the traditional path of going to school mm -hmm. and getting married, having children. Um yeah, like I, I, it's very hard, I think, because we're the sum of, ex, of, of our experiences, right? So it's very hard to say this is exactly how it would have turned out because what would have impacted that is what her experiences would have been, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. and even though I kind of created the character, I don't know if, if she grew up, <laughs> like she's still in Nigeria, depending on what happened to her, this was there. But I, yeah. I, I, I do know she would have gone on to school, gone on to go uh, attend yeah. university, that I, I know. Yeah. And, um, and it was because of, um environment there were some things that maybe she would have had to modify her way of doing things and and one of the things that i always tell people that you know uh women at home in nigeria may have um you know different challenges to face but it doesn't mean that they don't get around things in their own way um that because you know it, it may not be like you know yes they may not have all the rights and you know things that you know women in in, in the western world have but they know how to kind of navigate things yeah. and how to get the, you know, how to get what they want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, so yeah. So it's, they're not, they're not helpless, no. you know, in that sense. Um, it's just, I, I there's one thing they, they say at home, they say, well, the man may, may be the head, but the woman is the neck. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so they say, well, so we still get to kind of turn the head, you know, in what direction we want. So, yeah. yeah so, yeah. So, so that's, I, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Yejide, um, what, when people finish your book and they put it down, what would you like them to walk away with? Um, so depending on, I don't, I think it's, understanding just how um complex life is right like you know that complex in every culture in every um you know it depends on i think it depends on who the audience is yeah. right because i thought okay if there's somebody in in nigeria um that i wanted to have an understanding that you know living home is not I'm, I'm moving to any country you know is not necessarily the answer to all your problems and then um and that you know because what one of the things that happened um we saw up a lot when i was back home where we have i think it still happens to some degree now where uh, men who lived in western countries will come home at christmas and uh, to find a wife 
-hmm. and uh, take them abroad. And sometimes the families didn't really know this man, uh, but the promise of a better life yeah. uh, was enough to just say, hey, you know, marry him. You don't, you know, you get to fall in love with him. Uh, but understanding that it's not that, you know, the, 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 promise of a of a of a uh, a better life is not enough to just send your daughter off uh mm -hmm. with a near stranger yeah and um so for people to be uh and then and, and also when people do get married um they might might just hear understanding that when you do live in a different culture there's a learning and unlearning that that goes along with that and that if people are going to be able to successfully navigate you know new 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 homes they have to do some learning some unlearning you cannot transplant yourself from somewhere somewhere new and ex expect to still go by the same rules of engagement mm -hmm. um yeah so it's that conversations need to happen yeah so yeah, yeah. so i'm hoping that people you know it, it just expand their own thinking a little about learning about another if you're not from africa or from nigeria mm -hmm. um of how things are you know in somewhere else and I don't know. People make meaning of, of, of books the way that, <laughs> you know, to be honest, I didn't, that, I, I didn't really think, think hard and say, okay, what would I, we're just like, this was the way the story unfolded for me. Yeah, and then that's yeah. it. I'm like, okay, it's in the world now. And people get to read <laughs> it and make meaning of it the way that works for them. Yeah. Well, I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed your characters. I enjoyed the story and, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed talking with you about your book today, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What What's next? Uh, what's next is, um, so I'm right now, I'm a, I, I'm, I'm shopping or not shopping yet, but we're editing. I have to do another round of edits for my next novel. Um, mm -hmm. So it's called In Our Own Way. So fingers, eyelashes, everything crossed that we get to sell that soon. <laughs> and um because I also write children's books uh children's yes. picture books yeah. so um I have some children's picture books written um I write short stories I'm always writing something I think yes. that's the beauty of writing different um because I write shorts I write flash I write novels I write poetry yeah. so yeah so there's always but I think that's the the big what's next for me is is the novel mm -hmm. um so that's what I'm hoping gets finds a good home this year well Fingers crossed. I'm thank you. sure it will. And thank you so much for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. Yes. It was an absolute pleasure. Well, it was a pleasure to have you here. And for our viewers, I will put links down below in the description box so you can purchase a copy of A Good Name and also visit Yeji Day's website so you can check out all of her other work. Yes. <laughs> and Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Have a good Thank you. I'm not sure what time you'll be watching this, but have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>